Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a soul white grave lord's blood knight. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon page are linked below. Now onto the video. First colour that I'm going to use is Vallejo Black. I'm going to use this to paint the robes and also the kind of skirting that is on the side of the horse. Just going to be doing the cloth that's coming from the Blood Knight, a slightly different colour to the cloth which is on the horse, just so you can distinguish between the two. It'll also give it a little bit of a cool look about it too, having them both slightly different colours. If you haven't built them yet, it's worth painting this black part on before assembly because you can get the insides a lot easier than when they are built. So next we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Word Burners Red. I'm going to paint this onto the armour plates on the horse. This is where we'll be getting that nice kind of dark, deep red for the plates that contrasts quite well against the bright red or bright orangey red of the Blood Knight's armour. Really impressed with these miniatures. They've got enough cool details on them and stuff like that. They remind me of the Dragon Princes, the old High Elf miniatures, which were also pretty awesome. It's now going to use Citadel Dryad Bark. We're using this on the horse in general for its skin. You can see there I've also painted the tail of the horse in black. For the Dryad Bark, you want to get all of its skin. So it has that nice smooth brown colour. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Rhinox hide. I'm going to use this to do the leather straps that are like holding the saddle on and the little bits of saddle around the front too. You can see that where you've got those dangling tassels on the side there, I've painted them with Dryad Bark too. But I'm using the Rhinox hide to do all the straps that are holding on armour plates and the saddle. And also the bits that are holding the stirrups too. Now I'm going to use this little Retributor armour. Now I'm doing this because I quite like the deeper gold colour against the red. If you wanted to have it the lighter gold colour, like the box art and the, the ones shown on the Citadel site, I'd probably go with Liberator Gold first if you wanted that lighter gold colour, but I wanted to do the darker colour. So working with Retributor Armour on all of the gold parts here. They really do have some amazing details on these miniatures, I'm very, very impressed with them. The gold done, I'm now going to use Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to paint the bone and the hooves and the little pointy spurs that are coming out the back of the horse's foot. That's kind of heel, I suppose. I'll also be using this to do the skull too, which is on full display under that front armour piece. Now I'm going to use Citadel and the Fist on red. This is to paint the armour of the Blood Knight. Now although at the start it was sprayed red, it was sprayed with Citadel and the Fist on red, it is ever so slightly a different colour to the actual pot of my Fist on red, which seems to be slightly brighter. Give this armour and the shield a nice smooth coat of my fist on red. We're also using that for the flag on the banner too. Now we're using Citadel Lead Belcher to paint the spear tip. Some of the other details, lots of little studs dotted about the miniature. A fair few spikes. A few little buckles that you can use the lead belcher on. 
and there's a little bit of a smudge on the lens of the camera there because it is giving you that potatoing that we know so well. I'm going to start with Citadel Seraphim Sepia as the first shade. I'm going to put this on all of the Rakarth flesh areas. So you've got the skull, the hooves, that kind of bladey bit sticking out the back of the horse's ankle. It's this layer that really brings out the detail, so if you didn't want to go further with the painting, you could just leave it with the shades on that, leave it looking well detailed. Now I've gone on to Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. We're painting this onto all of the Retributor armor sections. Even that rear side of the collar that she has going up the back there. Just the kind of golden bat wing kind of effect is really, really good. Do like the look of these new soul blight grave lots. They are very, very good looking miniatures. So now we're going to be using Citadel Null Oil. We're going to use this on all of the leather straps, so those dryad bark straps, the rhinox hide straps. We'll also be using it on the horse's skin and also all the lead belcher parts. So that will darken those up and give you the opportunity to do some highlights and reapply the colour back to those areas because they are quite dark colours so the null oil works rather well on them. Now we're going to use Citadel Carrowbird Crimson. I'm going to use this on the Blood Knight's armour so the vampire's armour is going to be covered with Carrowbird Crimson. You initially see this there is a lot of detail but it doesn't stand out quite as well as soon as you throw these shades on you see how much there is you can understand why it's quite a long video now i'm going to use citadel Drucci violet this is going to be used on the horse's armor and also the ribbon which is hanging from the lance there's also a small ribbon wrapped around the lance just under her arm there too Now we're going to do a second layer of Drucci Violet and we're going to do this on the horse's armour. Now the reason I'm doing a second layer and you really want to make sure that the first layer is fully dried when you do this. The second layer will really darken down those armour plates. So you get that nice deep ready purpley colour on the armour plates. And then when you come to highlight those edges it really does make them stand out. But the second coat of Drucci Violet will do it. I was tempted to add one of a Grax Earth shade as well, but I just ended up staying with the Drucci Violet. So working on the horse armour now, we're going to use some Citadel Word Burr as red. I'm going to use a small layer brush for this. And you want to be doing about one mil of this colour around the edges and along those contours, like the ridges that are running through the armour. Colour slightly changed on the camera there, which is a bit frustrating, but you can still see quite clearly what's going on. You're just going to work that word bird as red around each of those contours. You can see that here. So now I'm going to use a little touch of Citadel Wasdaka Red. You're going to be using this to do about half a mil, like a really small edge highlight along each of the armour plates in the areas where you've just done that word bird as red. I'll start to bring out the detail on the armour plates and really make them stand out. You can see now where the Drucci Violet has pulled a little bit. 
it gives that impression of the darkened armour that we're after. If you wanted to darken it more, you could always do another layer of Juicy Violet, or even probably one of a Graxair shade too. So we're adding a tiny spot of white to the Wasdaka Red. We're now just going to do the very tips of these spikes and little sections of the ridges on the armour plates, and that'll make those stand out and give you that final layer of highlight. Next up, Citadel and the Fist on red, and we're going to start working on the Blood Knight's armour. So you'll be leaving the Caribou Crimson in the recesses and make sure you pick out all those armour plates. And we've got like the overhangs sort of like below where the calf muscle would be on these. You want to leave a bit more of the extra shade on there and then work the colour in a little bit further down so you do get the shade underneath it. Also, we'll be leaving the shade under the arms and areas that wouldn't be getting much light too, sort of under the feet as well. So now we're going to be using a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to start highlighting the Mephist on red that we've just applied. So you want to be covering similar areas but leaving some of that Mephist on red and also some of that shade around the edges so that you can see the brightness from the Evil Sun Scarlet. And also see some of the previous colours on there. So now I'm going to use a tiny bit of Citadel Wild Rider Red. Difficult for me to say that. I'm just going to pick out the edges and a few of the little details to make them stand out a little bit more. So with the armour done, we're now going to move on to the gold. We're going to return to Citadel Retributor armour. We're going to pick out all the details and all the ridges and the crests, things like that, leaving the Agrax Earth shade shade in the recess. Now we're going to use Citadel Liberator Gold so that we can highlight that. So you're going to be covering about 50% of the area that you covered with the Retributor armour. And that just lightens up that gold. That'll give you that nice little highlight. And lighten up the gold too. Now we've mixed a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome here and that will lighten up the Liberator Gold and give you that nice shine. It's not quite silver, not quite gold. It's a nice in-between colour. You just want to be picking out the details and the edges that will be catching the light more here and that will just make them stand out a lot because of the pigment in the Model Air Chrome. The lightness of it does make them stand out and it really does catch the light. So it's really, really nice colour to use on the gold. Mix it with a little bit of the Liberator Gold. It's Ace for Edge Highlights. So now we're returning to the Dryad Bark. You also want to be using the Dryad Bark on those straps that are holding the gold winged skulls that come down from the horse armour.
Now we are using a little bit of Balor Brown mixed with the Dryad Bark. And we're just going to highlight that horse's skin. Now I wanted to keep the skin quite dark on these, so we are only doing this layer as the highlight. But that will give it enough lightness to make all the details stand out while still maintaining a darkness that I wanted for the horses. Now we're going to use some Citadel Dryad Bark and Citadel Balor Brown. And this is almost similar mix to what we used on the horse's skin with the last one. We're just going to highlight the edges and the top ridges of the straps that are hanging down there. So you want to get the bottom edges and the top edges highlighted and also on those bits where they're joining onto the metal loops. You want to try and give them a little bit of a ridge on each side of the strap for those parts too. Now I'm going to add a little bit more Balor Brown. We're just going to do another highlight, final thin highlight to these straps. And like we do the Space Marines leather pouches, I'll be trying to do a horizontal markings on the vertical straps and vertical markings on a horizontal strap so it just gives it that rough worn look of the leather now we're going to use citadel rhinoxide and reapply the colour to those straps that are holding on the horse's armour and also the saddle that kind of thing like so. Now I'm going to add a little bit of Balor Brown to the Rhinoxide just to lighten that up. We're going to do some little edge highlights on the leather straps. I'm going to add a little bit more Balor Brown to the previous mix. I'm just going to give one more final highlight to these leather straps just to lighten up those top edges on them. I'm not going to be doing the bottom edges, just the top ones with this, just to make them stand out that little bit more. So now we are using Vallejo Black. I'm going to mix in some Citadel Sons of Horus Green just to make this a slightly off black colour. Now we're going to highlight the cloth parts that are coming from the horse. I'm not going to touch the cloth that's coming from the vampire at the moment. It's just to lighten it up. You'll be able to see the ridges and the crease in the material showing up a little bit more once we've done this. Like so. Next, we're going to add some more Sons of Horus Green to the previous mix. We're using this to highlight the cloth. If you think about where the light will be catching the cloth, so you've got the top edges of those ridges, you'd have the top edges at the bottom of each of the holes in the cloth. We'll be making sure that you're leaving some of the black completely untouched in those recesses too. 
Now I'm going to add some more Sons of Horus Green to the previous mix. I'm going to give that another highlight. With this layer, I think the highlights really come into their own. Start to show up as a bit more green and a bit more eerie rather than the standard maybe grey, dark grey highlights that you put onto black cloth. Finally, we're going to use a little bit more Sons of Horus Green for the final mix on this cloth. It is quite light this, and we're just going to be doing some really thin highlights vertically down some of the creases, and then also highlighting the ridges at the bottom of each of the holes in a cloth too. Like so. Now we're just going to use a little tiny bit of pure Sons of Horus Green. I'm just going to do some little tiny highlights just to bring out those details. Now I've done a few extra layers on the cloth than I usually would do. And this is just because I wanted to make it look a little bit smoother and also to have some really thin but quite bright highlights just to make things stand out on there too. I'm going to use some Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to use this to reapply some of the metallics to the areas we've previously painted with Lead Belcher. I'm also going to use it to do all the little studs on the straps and the spikes on the armour and the blades on those spikes on the front of the horse's head armour. Little bits of the armour by the front hooves too and the point of the lance. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo Modeler Chrome. I'm just going to use this to do some edge highlights. Just pick out some of the details. Now the edge highlights on the lance, which I'm conveniently putting out of the way there. You just want to be doing along the angled side, so you're picking off that edge. You'll probably see it a bit better on the lance here. Going from the very tip down to the base, where you have those different little angled parts, and you can pick out those details and the ridges on those little angled kind of decorative bits at the base of the tip of the lance using a little bit of the model air chrome too now working on the bone now we're going to start with citadel rakarth flesh i'm going to reapply this to the bone and the hooves and the little pointy spurs on the ankles making sure you leave some of the seraphim sepia in the recesses so that you've Got that nice shade in there. Now we're going to add some Citadel Ushabti bone to the previous mix. I'm going to start highlighting those Rakarth flesh areas. So when you're highlighting this, you want to make sure that you're leaving some of the Rakarth flesh and some of the shade visible. So you have all three of those colours on there. Now we're going to add some Vallejo White to the previous mix. We're just going to highlight all the areas of bone and pick out the details. So that really stands out. The amount of detail on the horse's skulls is, I thought, quite incredible. Like just from all the recesses and you've got all the teeth, the little ridges above the teeth. It's a really, really detailed part of the miniature, that. Now 
I'm going to use some Vallejo German Grey. I'm going to start highlighting the cloth part that we haven't done yet, which is coming off the Blood Knight. We're also going to use it to highlight the angled sections on the lance. And also the cloth part going from the vampire's hand to the front of the horse's face. The reins is the word that I'm looking for. They are quite decorative and quite fancy. You've got quite a bit of detail on there too. So now I'm going to use some Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm going to use that to highlight the cloth sections. The lighting seems quite poor on this part and I'm not entirely sure why. As long as you're highlighting the crests of the ridges also the details and the holes in the material like you have done with the Sons of Horus green previously. You'll get that in the right place and get that cloth looking nice. Now we're going to use some Vallejo black and a little tiny spot of Balor brown mixed in with it. I'm going to start highlighting the tail. So there's quite a few little ridges on this, so you just want to be picking out those ridges and leaving the shade in the recesses, or rather the Vallejo black in the recesses. Picking out the ridges and the strands of hair on that will make it stand out quite nicely. So we're going to add a little bit more Balor Brown to the previous mix, and do another highlight on the tail. Again, you don't want to go too light because it is quite a dark miniature. Wanted to get the most part of the horse fairly dark while the rider is fairly bright in the red armour. Finally, we're going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Rhinox hide. And we're just going to paint on the kind of bindings that are going down the horse's tail. Like so. And that is the finished Blood Knight. I'm really happy with how she turned out. In the cracking models, the detail in them is absolutely unreal. And they do look really, really nice when they're painted up. It's worth putting in the extra time for them. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.